What does your role as an ethical hacker entail? Yeah, so essentially being an ethical hacker means that um, my, my clients who range from banks to governments to small startups to big companies, they come to me um, with the hope of helping them secure their businesses, um, be it their online presence or their physical security, from their staff to their servers, kind of everything in between, anything that holds data or transmits data. And the analogy that I sometimes use is like hiring a, a burglar, an ethical burglar, and asking them to come and check your, your home security. Because generally a, a burglar, the, the mindset that a burglar has or the mindset that a hacker has, is a bit more inquisitive than the person who sets up the security. So the person who installs the home alarm or possibly sets up security at a company, um, the way they think sometimes is a bit more defensive, a bit more mundane. Maybe they don't, they don't think about all the little um, almost edge cases where things might might go wrong. So as, a, as an ethical hacker, it's largely, what largely drives you is curiosity. So, hey, there's this thing in front of me, this barrier that's stopping me getting some interesting information. How can I kind of go around the edge or dig underneath or climb over the top um, to try and get to that information? And it's, um, it's often not as glamorous as you might see in, in Hollywood where I don't know, you've got 3D screensavers spinning and all that kind of thing. Um, it can be a bit mundane to watch and it generally can take, if, if I'm pulled in to, on, a, on an engagement to, to test, say, a bank's security, it's generally about four days of just kind of metaphorically banging your head against the wall, trying to find that one little edge case where something's a little bit weak, maybe it's an outdated server somewhere, maybe you can trick an employee to click an email link that lets you in the kind of the side. Um, but generally, once, once you kind of breach the perimeter, um, so if you think of an organization, most organizations is like a piece of candy where it's kind of hard on the outside and it's soft and squishy in the middle. Mm. Once you kind of crack the outside and get onto the inside, then generally the data just pours out and very quickly you get access to, to uh, everything that's precious to that organization. Mm -hmm. What do you predict will be the most common style of cyber attack businesses should look out for in 2023? So if I had to say the most common cyber attack coming up for 2023, I would say ransomware is quite a hot topic at the moment and quite a difficult problem to solve. Um, and it's it's driven by financial reward of cybercrime. Like ransomware is it's quite a nice vehicle for criminals to to get money for, for their ways. Like, you know, before things like ransomware, um, if you're if you're a hacker and you want to make money out of out of your endeavors, maybe you'd write Trojans to get access to like, to, to someone's you know, internet banking and things like that. Those are normally small small pots of victory, small small wins. Maybe you'd write malware or something and sell that. But ransomware provides quite a nice vehicle for cyber criminals um, to be able to make quite a lot of money and quite quite easily. And it's it's one of those I would say unintended side effects of something like Bitcoin or blockchain. When we thought up those ideas it's all about yeah de decentralized banking and you know freeing freeing people from the shackles of capitalism and things like that um, as with most technologies often criminals will find a way to uh, repurpose them and with ransomware we've, we've seen that because if you if you're a victim to ransomware um, the the hackers will generally you know ask for money via Bitcoin or some other cryptocurrency so it can't be traced back to them. Wouldn't work if you said, hey, here's my Lloyd's TSB banking details, you know, give me 50,000 pounds, because obviously the police would kick down your door quick sticks. Um, so yeah, ra ransomware is probably one of the biggest problems I'd say at the moment. And at the moment, there's, there's no kind of immediate quick fix or solution for that. Um, and I'll say that would probably be coupled with uh, phishing or some kind of spear phishing. That's generally one of those things that doesn't go away. Um, and a lot of the recent quite, quite big hacks, like even in recent news, so Uber got uh, breached recently in Rockstar Games. And if you go way back to like, Hillary, Hillary Clinton, the DNC and PBS and Sony um, and everyone in between, it's generally the, these hacks get done via, via spear phishing, which isn't very sophisticated, but it's very effective. You know, kind of get sent an email and you click something and something bad happens that lets the hacker take control of, of your laptop. And then they generally burrow into the organization from there. And that's quite often paired with the ransomware. So my short answer for the uh, um, common style of cyber attack for businesses in 2023 mm -hmm. is probably ransomware paired with spear phishing. Mm -hmm. How can businesses identify potential cyber weaknesses in their organization? 
Yeah, so if you're a business and you're trying to yeah, identify yeah, um, cyber risks, any risks that might let criminals or hackers into your organization, there are all kinds of things that you can do. Um, generally, I would say there's no, there's no silver bullet. Um, so there's no one product or magic thing, no matter what vendors tell you, that will, um, that will solve this. But generally speaking, um, a layered approach is good for, for, for anything, for cyber security, for home security, for life. Uh, if you have lots, lots, if you, if, you, if you diversify what you're doing, you stand a better chance in case one system fails. And there's all kinds of things that, that, that you can do and that vendors might try and sell you or that experts might try and tell you. Things like um, you know, segmenting the network, uh, things like zero trust, make sure your software is up to date. Um, there's all kinds of solutions these days with with email, like um, what's it called, glass glass door or glass wall, where your e e where your emails aren't uh, any nasties in your email aren't displayed. This you know just kind of renders an image. Um, there's lots and lots of little things that you can do as an organization, and it's generally that that layered approach that's that's quite good. I'd say if you if you're looking for you know if you're watching or listening, and you're looking for you know two two or three things that that you should do. Um, Keep your software up to date. So out of date software, you know, that's always great if there's a vulnerability in, in you know, your server software, your, your client side software that hackers can take advantage of. Um, use password managers. So as individuals and businesses push, up, push out password managers to your staff because if you're you know, forcing your staff to remember 20 different passwords and change them every month, that doesn't work out well for anyone except the hackers. So if you only have to remember one password, that unlocks the vault. And that's, that's quite a, a secure approach. And pick, pick a good password for your for your one password. Um, and what I like to do is use a, a thing called um, Canary Tokens. Essentially what these are, it's um, you can embed a little bit of information in Word documents, Excel documents, PDFs. There's all kinds of little canaries you can embed in these, these, these kinds of files. And essentially you leave these files lying around and almost like tripwires. So it's, it's kind of like leaving confidential files at home when you go out, you know, a piece of paper says top secret, um, and you put a little vial of ink next to it, such that if someone picks it up, the ink spills, mm -hmm. and then you'll know that someone's been there. So um, canary tokens are a great way to know if you've been breached. So I use those quite a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's a, a medium, medium length answer. It's quite a difficult question. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the... Uh, the other answers come speak to me and I can help you out. So last final questions about you as a speaker and as a person. What do you hope corporate audiences take away from your public speeches? Very good question. So what, what do I hope um, audience members take away from, from the talks? And part of the reason I, I give these kind of public talks is I want to, I'll do a whole bunch of things, but I, I want to help people understand what I call the realm of the possible. So like your IT guy will tell you, don't click suspicious links, change your password 12 times a day to some ridiculous thing you can't remember. All, all these kind of constraints. I mean, we don't really, the average user doesn't understand why they're being told to do these things. It doesn't really make sense. So what I try and do in, in my talks is I will show you the, the realm of the possible, which means what, what can hackers do and what, why, why do they think the way they do and what opportunities do they have with the average person at the average organization. So as an example, I've got a talk where I demonstrate you know, a real world hack with a kind of a, 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 with, with, with a spearfish. So you know, a demo laptop, demo, demo laptop, we get audience member to come up and play the Bob in accounting and I send an email and he interacts with the email and that gives me control of his laptop. And then we burrow deeper into the, the pretend network and we smash and grab and exfiltrate data. And it's it's a what we call it it's a live hack so it's real and it shows I like to show the real software that hackers use and the real way hackers think and the way they approach your organization both the company and the individuals so you may think oh, I'm not special no one's going to hack me and that's probably true but the hacker's going to pick someone and it, it could be you if, if you're the weakest if you're kind of the maybe a, unlike I don't like the term the weakest link but if you are able to be manipulated in some way. Um, so I do like showing people what, what could happen and do a little bit of a deep dive. So here's some actual black screen matrix, whatever. Um, so you see what hackers really do and then, you know, kind of fluff that up with a bit of uh, story and background and, and, and that kind of thing. So 
my objective is to not just not so much to scare people but to show them what's possible and then bring them on board as part of your security team like i think the biggest strength in any organization is their staff and if you can if you can empower your staff and if i can come on stage and get their attention and say hey look you you could be the hero of the story you could spot this you could report this you could defend your organization in this way then kind of gets people excited then then they want to be on the same team as the it department and you i i try to remove the animosity um between you know it being the all-knowing and you know the, the users being the, the the little guy um and i just i really enjoy showing people stuff that i'm passionate about getting them excited and then yeah teaching them some things they didn't know and helping them helping them keep safe online both at work and at home Thank you.